Today we're going to look at a game between Wesley So from America and Khram Merkumyan from Armenia that was played in the recently concluded Chess Olympiad in Chennai. So So had the white pieces and we have the Karukan on the board, but not the most usual variation of the Karukan. Very early on they deviated and as you can see here, this is only this position on move seven has only been reached 25 times in master games. And if we go on a few more moves, we are already here on move 11 in new territory. And this is very unusual for high level games. So already for master games, a novelty we have here on move 11. So notice that white has the bishop there, which is very useful. Each side has a semi-open file to operate on. But the main thing white is going for himself at the moment is the bishop pair. So neither um, this knight here on d7 or a knight on c3 is very well placed. So they try, both players are trying to reroute their knights. White first solidifies his pawns by forming a pawn chain. And of course, they're fighting here for the e file. And now, finally, the knight comes to a slightly better square. Opening for the rook, that's the main idea. The knight here doesn't really have any good square to go to, but the rook now is operating on the semi open file. And Wesley So here made a mistake. And if you want to, you can pause the video and try and find how black can punish this mistake. Now, if you thought that it is e4, that's exactly the same move that the grandmaster in this game made playing the black pieces. Yet this is a blunder. What he should have done was to play bishop f8. And then this could have been a possible continuation where he would end up having a knight for two pawns. Of course, e4 is exactly what So was hoping for. He was playing a bit of hope chase here and his opponent didn't take too long on this move. He went for the fork. But this is an ineffective fork. White now as a winning move. So again, if you want to pause the video and try and work it out, you can do so and see if you can find the winning move for white. Perhaps what black expected was knight takes pawn. And then white would have a bishop for, um, sorry, white would have two pawns for a piece, with some compensation, still having the bishop pair, but this is not at all what Wesley so planned. Rook takes pawn, and now notice that the pawn cannot recapture. In the game, this move was played, not the best move, but this is dead lost for black anyway. If pawn takes rook, white now as a forced mating sequence. Now think about Paul Morphy and his games for the next move if you want to try and find it. So if you found queen takes pawn, check, well done. This is the sort of move that Morphy was known for, queen sacks. So black has no choice, he has to take the queen. So now we check with a bishop. Notice this bishop is cutting off, the king can't go back. And the other bishop is cutting off the g8 square. So the king has to come up. Now we check with a knight. The king has to move up. And again, another opportunity for you to try and find the best move here if you want to pause the video. So if you found g4, well done. That's a correct move. You sacrifice yet another piece. Now look at this. Black is up 14 points. In material value, but yet his king is in 
very serious danger and white is just completely winning now we bring in the last remaining piece that hasn't yet moved and we have a check made here with the two bishops so the bishops here really doing the lord's work and checkmating the opponent's king so a brilliant game here by wesley so showing us a few things that forks are not always effective and also even at the highest level at very high stake tournaments it may pay off if you make a bit of a risky move in order to try and set a trap in this case it paid off very well for wesley so and he got a very quick victory